Hello everybody, this is Anger J, and I'm back here with my Team Breakdown series. I'm going to like, address the last team in the Adams Division, the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators um, are kind of an interesting franchise, especially starting back up with the 92-93 season. They had some issues at the expansion draft in 92, and they draft, ended up drafting a lot of guys either past their prime or they never really had a prime. And this led to them having a team record that year of 10 wins, 70 losses, 4 ties. This is for a meager 24 points, and they were not only the last place team in the Adams Division, they were the last place team in the NHL, as even though they tied in points with San Jose, they had fewer wins, and thus were the worst team in the NHL that year. They would go on to be the worst team in the league for a few more years after that, until they finally got things together and became more competitive uh, in the late 90s. In 94, they have a average home ice advantage so they'll get a few boosts at home to the ratings and they're going to be sorely needed as they have some lower rated players and then on the road they have a brutal disadvantage so this is the first team i've mentioned with a brutal disadvantage uh, there's four different presets for road ice disadvantage there is low average high and brutal brutal obviously being the worst so you'll have some severe penalties to your players ratings on the road with ottawa ottawa is a tier six team which is essentially the expansion tier and their best matchups are against other expansion teams, San Jose, Tampa Bay, Florida, Anaheim. But Ottawa is actually one of the stronger expansion teams. So you, if you really wanted to, and you just wanted to give your opponent some other team, and you really want to be Ottawa in a, in a situation for sure, um, you can put them up against Hartford, and that could be okay. And then if you um, are looking for an upset special of sorts, St. Louis is available as an upset special for Ottawa. So some reasons you might try and pick Ottawa, uh, despite their, their poor team is that they actually have a pretty balanced attack for offense. They have three forwards who are all competent and scoring the puck one way or the other. And this is a stark contrast to a lot of the other expansion teams who do not have such balance. So if you like a balanced team, Ottawa is certainly one to, to look at. Um, they also have a very competent defense, Norm McIver, Brad Shaw, very good uh, tier six defense, um, certainly worthwhile to ice and they go well with the forwards. So you get nice team chemistry there. They also have respectable forward depth, so if you want to switch up your roster a little bit, get more defensive out there, uh, just get a little, a little bit different look. Ottawa has six or seven guys that are all fairly reasonable to ice, which is also very unusual for a team in this tier. They have good weight bug and CB options. Um, they're not especially great ones. They're not especially uh, weight bug reliant or CB reliant, but within the context of some of these other expansion teams, they actually have some nice options at uh, both spectrums um, and then also lastly they have good speed in the tier they have a well-balanced line not only skill wise but skating wise so definitely try and take advantage of that some reasons why people might try and give you Ottawa in a matchup are that Ottawa has the worst goalies in the game they are absolutely terrible and goals will be conceded regardless of what you try to do with them they have a total lack of defensive depth so unlike their forward situation where they have six or seven guys that they can use defense has two only and they're starting. So if one of them gets hurt or goes in the box, you're icing a guy that's a serious handicap. Um, they also have zero elite skill throughout the roster. It's just a nicely distributed tier six team. There's no game breaking skills whatsoever in this in this roster. And their default line um, could be a little bit CB reliant. It's a little bit heavier. Turgeon, Kadelski are, are a little bit on the heavy side. So if you like a weight bug team that is heavily slanted towards weight bug players, Ottawa's not going to be really good for you because their weight bug players are severely underskilled, but they're okay in tier six, which is why they are an option. So speaking of the players, let's go ahead and jump into the lineups here. So first line I would recommend is Sylvain Turgeon, Bob Kandelsky, Jamie Baker. This is the most balanced line and probably the best offensive line while still being very responsible on defense. So Sylvain Turgeon, former Hartford Whaler, has four agility, four speed, so he's going to be uh, on his natural wing here as he is a left-handed shot so he should be using his agility and speed to deke the goalie and create space on the wing so that he can distribute the puck uh, as best as he can but his passing rating is only two so you want to really try and make short uh, easy passes with Turgeon and hopefully his skating will allow him to do that um, as far as the shooting goes he's got three shot power which is okay but the two shot accuracy is not that great which is which is the reason why I don't like him in the center one of the main reasons but the other main reason is that at 212 pounds and only three stick handling, he's not really built to be a one-time guy, and he's not quite good enough as a one-on-one -on -one guy. 
to just slice through defenses through the slot where there's high traffic areas. Um, that's not really his game. He's more of a winger, more of a dangler on the outside to, to create havoc out there. So just leave him out there. I think he'll do the most damage for you there. Um, and then leave Bob Kadelski in the middle. So we got Bob Kadelski here, three agility, three speed, right-handed shot, only three offensive awareness. So he may not always fill out that slot area, especially on the road, but at home he should be doing a little bit better with it. Three shot power, but four shot accuracy leaves him with the best shot ratings on the team. So he is your number one sniper. Just leave him in the middle. You want to use one time one timers with him if you can. And every once in a while, he may be able to expose a lower rated goalie with a deke. So just leave him in the middle. That's where he's going to do his best 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 damage. Uh, three passing, three stick handling. Nothing exciting there, but uh, nothing crippling for sure. 212 pounds, just like Turgeon, but they're both underwhelming CB checkers. Although against teams like Tampa Bay, where they can ice Bob, uh, Brian Badley, uh, and Mikael Anderson, guys of that get that sort of caliber, they can CB check them just fine. So um, they're perfectly competent in that regard. And then lastly, we have Jamie Baker, for, uh, future San Jose Shark, and the current play-by-play -play man for the San Jose Sharks telecast. Um, he has three agility, three speed. He's just a very even line. Uh, Evenly distributed player. He's got threes in every rating, including except for checking, which is a two. 196 pounds, so he's middleweight, not really weight bug, not really CB. You have to know your matchup with him to take advantage of things physically. But he's perfectly good at just shadowing players in tier six, playing defensively with a poke check, and just you know uh, being pesky. Uh, I always liked Jamie Baker because growing up I was a Sharks fan, still am. And in 1994, he was the one that scored the game seven series clinching goal against the Detroit Red Wings at the Joe Louis Arena and was probably one of the biggest upsets in playoff history at the time. So Jamie Baker will certainly always be remembered by me and I will always try to put him in my lineup if possible. But you may not have the same sort of attachments to Jamie Baker that I do. Um, so you may be looking for something a little bit different. And something a little bit different could include uh, Doug Smale. So Doug Smale, he is your defensive stopper. He is uh, your main weight bug checker with three agility, three speed, and weight bug checking is all he really does as he only has two shot power, one accuracy, two passing, and two stick handling. So they're all pretty lackluster there. And at 180 pounds, he is a clear weight bug guy. And he will actually be pretty good against San Jose who have a lot of 196 pound players. And to be a good weight bug checker, you need to be 16 pounds less than the player you're trying to check. So Doug Smale, you can check Perry Bearsan, Doug Wilson, Neil Wilkinson, on and on and on with San Jose because they have a lot of guys at 196. So. Doug Smell is a great plug and play there. Other than that, you really got to look at the situation. Um, just make sure he's going up against guys on his side of the ice that he can take advantage of. Otherwise, Doug Smell is just not very good, especially on offense, unfortunately. But you got to love his mustache. You got to love his defensive ability. So he's certainly worth considering as the fourth forward. And this is probably your best defensive lineup to, while still having your best offensive weapon out, weapons out there. But you may also be inclined to go Turgeon, Baker, Smell as this is a better defensive lineup than having Kudelski out there, but not quite as strong on offense as Baker's not quite the sniper, but he's competent enough, um, especially in this lower tier matchups that he will likely be facing in the tournament uh, tournament play. So those are your three main uh, forward lines with Ottawa. They do have some other useful subs, such as Laurie Boschman. He has four agility, two speed. The former Winnipeg Jet is more of a defensive-minded player with four, four awareness on the defensive side of the ice. Um, shot power of three, shot accuracy of two, passing of two, stick handle of three. So he's he's perfectly fine player. But the really nice thing about him is that four agility. I think really that's the key attribute for him. As you know, I don't usually recommend players with two speed. They're too slow in, this, in most cases. But in tier six and on a team like Ottawa who aren't fast at all, um, Boschman's two speed four agility isn't really a noticeable difference. He's actually really great in close uh, uh, when trying to deke goalies. And he can just take advantage of these lower rated goalies that he'll face in tier six with regularity. So if you want just a, your best deeker out there and you can uh, establish the puck in the offensive zone with regularity, Boschman's going to be the best guy to take advantage of goalies while deking. Even better than Turgeon, I think, because uh, Boschman skating just allows for it. Um, another guy to consider, Mark Lamb. Uh, he's actually one of the better skaters on the team for agility again three speed uh, But he's not as good of a deeker because of his two shot power and one accuracy. So he's really inaccurate um, Three passing three stick counting means he's a decent playmaker and at 188 pounds You may want to put him in over Baker, but 
I, I think Baker's a better player. He's more balanced. The only thing you're getting with Lamb really is extra agility. So if you really value agility, Lamb is a guy to, to consider. And lastly, Jeff Lazaro. He's a bench sniper, three agility, three speed. Um, by bench sniper, I'm, I'm being pretty pretty generous here as he only has two shot power, but three shot accuracy. So he's one of the better shooters on the team. That's not in the starting lineup. Two passing, three stick handling, so it's pretty limited. 188 pounds, a little bit of a weight bug guy, but at his speed and agility, he's not a big checker by any means. More of an offensively minded player. So if you start running out of guys to put him center, he can maybe uh, do the job for a period or two if need be. But I'm going to go with the number one line that I recommended in my matchup against Hartford, Terrazon, Fidelski, Baker. And then lastly, the defense. This is pretty open and shut here in terms of who to start. Norm McIver, easily the number one defenseman of this unit. He was uh, the leading scorer for, for Ottawa in 92-93. 56 agility, which is a 3 out of 6 um, when it comes to the presets. So there's 7 presets in 94. So 0 out of 6 rating, 0 is included in, in those presets. So 3 out of 6 means he's an average agility. He's got 3 speed. A four offensive awareness, four defensive awareness. So he should be in the right areas a lot of the time. Shot power of three, accuracy of two, passing three, stick handling three. 188, best weight buck checker on the team, but not excessively so. Um, he'll be fine against Chris Contos. Guys like Pat Flynn, he'll struggle with physically. So you'll just want to use his skating and awareness to stay involved in the play, take away passing lanes. Um, but you also may be inclined to rush with Norm McIver as he is a fairly well skilled defenseman especially in tier six so if you're down by a goal or two don't be afraid to get norman to the attack he can be plenty useful and um will allow you to include another man in the attack that can actually put the puck in the net whereas a lot of these tier six teams don't have defensemen that can do that um his best partner by far brad shaw he's similarly rated overall to these other guys but brad shaw clearly uh, head and shoulders above him with three agility Two speed, that's really his only weakness. I think it's a two speed. Um, right handed shot, so he's gonna be on his natural sh side here. He's got three shot power, one accuracy, you're probably not gonna use it a whole lot. Three passing, so he's a good passer when he does get the puck on his stick, which is important. You wanna get the puck off your stick to Turgeon and Baker and just drive the wings and, and start creating offense if you can. Excuse me. And then he has three stick handling too, so he should be okay in, in some traffic areas in the defensive zone. So you can, you can use his agility to try and create some space and then uh, move the puck with his passing ability. So he's not a total um, black hole on defense or on offense. At 196 pounds, weight bug defenseman, uh, not much of a CB checker, not much of a weight bug checker. So just, you know, keep the play in front of you with Shaw. He's not gonna be able to chase down too many breakaways, but if he can stay in front of the play, he's perfectly fine. And he's easily the best option on Ottawa's blue line that, as the rest of their roster is pretty anemic. Um, you'll get Brad Marsh's default sub a lot. He's not very good unless you know how to CB check. If you don't know how to CB check, he's pretty much useless. He's got two agility, two speed, um, one shot power, zero accuracy, three passing, or two, two passing, so that's his best skill, and one stick handle. 228 pounds, three checker. He's gonna be okay CB check wise. I mean, yeah, he's a little slow, two speed, two agility, so it's nothing too exciting there. But if he can get somebody in his sights, he's gonna lay him out. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate that you know, every other skill that he has is a liability and I might actually ice him over Shaw if his player sprite had no helmet as Brad Marsh was one of the last players in the NHL to not wear a helmet um, so he's definitely a one of those past their prime players that Ottawa selected but he's definitely an interesting player who had a long and storied career very respected player um, but he's a little bit over his head in some matchups as a default sub uh, one guy you might want to bring off the bench in place of him is Ken Hammond. He's the most agile skater that's not in the starting lineup at three. Uh, two speed, that's what you're gonna get with the Ottawa subs is two speed, can't avoid that. Three defensive awareness, his skills, nothing really great. One pass accuracy, two stick handling, you don't care about a shot because he's not gonna really shoot very much. Middleweight defenseman, just like Shaw, three checker. Um, just keep the play in front of you with him. That's all you really can do. Um, another guy that you'll see a lot from for Ottawa, Chris Luongo. He's very anemic, two skater, speed and agility. His skills are even worse. Um, two pass accuracy, two stick handling. So that's really all you get. He's the second best weight bug defenseman in terms of weight at 188 pounds. He's tied with McIver, but he's so underskilled. It's tough to, to suggest him. 
there's not really a good CV guy except for Marsh. I mean, you can maybe look at Darren Rumble. He's very similar to Marsh, but a little bit better with the puck. A little bit less of a CV checker, 212 pounds, three checker. So he's a little bit less susceptible to being weight bug checked when he has the puck, but he's not quite a bit of, not quite as much of a CB force as Brad Marsh. So those really are your only options in terms of guys off the bench, but you definitely want to stay with McIver and Shaw. Don't get cute. There's no reason to get cute with with Ottawa uh, on their blue line. Their two best players are definitely heads and shoulders above the rest. So lastly, goalie. This is one of the few teams where you have a goalie situation where you can play either the backup or the starter as they are similarly rated, but you probably want to go with the backup Daniel Berthelwein as he has the higher agility rating with three as opposed to Sidorkovich's two. Um, puck control are both pretty bad with two each. Uh, save ratings. Only Bertha William has a three stick left. Everything else is a two. Um, but the main difference that between these guys is their weight. So Bertha William with the higher agility, three agility compared to Sidorkovic's two, will be much better in manual goalie control than Sidorkovic's because Bertha William has a higher agility rating and the lower weight. So if you have lower weight, you accelerate faster, you stop faster, you turn faster than guys who are heavier, which Sidorkovic is clearly heavier than Bertha William. So Bertha William, heads and shoulders is your uh, main choice as goalie so you want to sub him in because he does not start but regardless you're still going to give up a lot of goals with him because he is not good especially in AI mode he is pretty pathetic so keep that manual goalie control ready and wait because you're going to need it a lot so reviewing Ottawa's team strategy before I jump in here to get to go against Hartford they were so I had so much fun with them last episode I thought I'd bring them back for one more and they are one of Ottawa's stretch matchups so they're definitely not out of place here. Uh, so strategy, use Turgeon's speed on the left wing to attack slower defensemen within this tier. So if you're facing Tampa Bay's defense, they have two speed players like Hammerlick. Um, if you're going against Florida and, you're, and say you're on Gord Hines' side, use Turgeon's speed to just turn those guys, to make those guys uh, have to turn and skate and address and move towards them because Turgeon should be skating circles around these guys, generally speaking. So if you can get them out of position, then you can make those short passes to Kadelski or Baker for easy one-timers or even attack the net yourself with Turgeon because he's plenty uh, capable of scoring goals himself. Um, with Ottawa, you want to maintain possession, and if you lose it in the offensive zone, forecheck aggressively, especially if you have Duck Smell on the ice. If you have Duck Smell on the ice, that's his number one role, forecheck, um, because he can just run around in Tier 6 and put guys on their back left and right. Uh, also, Baker, Turgeon, Dece uh, not Baker, uh, Kadelski, Turgeon, decent enough CB guys. You can go in, four check, create a turnover, make a quick pass, boom. They're 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 competent enough on offense to take advantage of that. So just press the play with Ottawa. They're they're one of the more skilled teams in this tier. So so take the game to your opponent. Um, also, just be cognizant of who you're playing against. Certain teams have different players of different weights. So. Ottawa can use their forward depth to adjust to the matchup because they can't do that on defense. They have two defensemen. That's it. There's no one else worth icing. If you want a weight bug advantage, or if you want a CB check advantage, or if you want to take advantage of something on the other team that you um, to make life on them harder, bring a guy off the bench. Don't be afraid. Um, take advantage of their balanced scoring. With a lot of these expansion teams, it's easy to know where the offense is going to come from. From Anaheim, it's going to be Yake. San Jose is going to be Falloon. Tampa Bay is going to be Bradley mostly, uh, Florida, Lomakin, Ottawa. It could be any of the guys. They're all solid scorers, so take advantage of that. Um, and then lastly, on defense, at all costs, protect the slot. Do not let anybody in there because your goalies will give up slap shot goals real easy, floaters real easy. Um, and then be ready with manual goalie. Don't try and back check too much with Ottawa, especially on breakaway situations. There's no real point in it. Your goalie is not going to stop anything in AI mode so don't be afraid to take cold, take control of the goalie you have a really user friendly goalie back there with uh, decent agility and low weight so at, just please do not focus too much on back checking with, with Ottawa you're, you're only going to do yourself a disservice with that so um, with all that said I think we're ready for our matchup here with Hartford so one thing I see a lot in tournament play when it comes to Ottawa and other expansion teams is this is something that more inexperienced players or less skilled players will select when they're going up against a guy who they know is better than them. 
in an attempt to slow the other guy down. And this is not necessarily a bad strategy on its own. Um, I know there are some higher level players out there who are not necessarily familiar with these rosters. They don't know who these guys are. They don't know their ratings. They don't know what they weigh. So it's tough to take advantage of weight bug checking or CB checking or, or any of that because they just they don't know. So in, in, in that respect, picking this matchup or uh, excuse me, not this matchup in particular, but picking an expansion team matchup in tier six can be you know one way to try and even the playing field. But you need to be careful with it because um, there are guys out there, um, I'm one of them personally, who love the expansion teams. So, I mean, barring that you don't know who you're playing, or you don't know exactly if they love expansion teams or not, um, you might be working yourself into a bit of a disadvantage against a guy who knows these teams inside and out. I mean, I know San Jose inside and out. I know Ottawa. I know Anaheim, Tampa Bay. These are all teams I grew up playing with, and I played so many cup runs with them, so many seasons that I did on pen and paper. Um, I've taken them into Classic League, um, Exhibition, you name it. I've spent the time, I've done the research, I've learned how to how to do things with this team and, and just play to their strengths, which is why I feel so comfortable talking about teams like this um, in my videos is I'm not just looking at the ratings and going, oh, you know, this guy's clearly better than the others because ratings or because you know some perception I have I mean there's hidden there's hidden guys on this roster like Laurie Boschman and Mark Lamb who can be useful in um, specific situations and are certainly not bad guys to bring off the bench they're not just random uh, expansion guys that you're that are just gonna be terrible like if you pick Florida and you take somebody off the bench on Florida they're generally gonna be very low rated with no no plus skills whatsoever. Whereas Ottawa, they have a couple guys like Boschman, Lamb, uh, Lazaro, uh, Smale, who are, they have some, like a plus skill, maybe two, just very useful players overall. And you can use these guys to to your benefit and bringing them into the matchups. Like right here, Cadelsi, out for the game. I mean, you never know when this is gonna happen in the tournament. And this happens all the time. You just never know when it's gonna be your turn to deal with this. So you need to know not just the starters but you need to know these subs so that when this happens you know okay so for instance here I'm playing Hartford uh, Sanderson I can't chuck uh, Sanderson with Smale I can check um, Verbeek and Castles and the defenseman with Smale so I feel pretty comfortable with Smale in this situation um, but I may also want to consider Mark Lamb but not in this situation because he can't check the other forwards on the line. He's, he's too heavy. So I want to go with Doug Smale in this situation because I know he can at least check everybody but Sanderson. And that's all I want from my bench guy coming in here is to play defense. I mean, say I was in a, tur a tournament game here and I'm up 3-0. Why do I need more goals? Why do I need to put Jeff Lazaro out there or try to um, stick, stick another offensive guy out there when I don't have to? I mean, this is... This is a situation I've been presented with, so I'm going to put in my defensive player, Doug Smale. I know he's a good CB checker, or not CB checker, weight bug checker in this matchup, so I'm going to try and take advantage of that. See, th these are the, just the things you want to think about. You don't want to just throw these matchups at people that are more skilled than you and hope they work out because the other guy doesn't know the, ma the rosters or, or something, or you, you slow them down because they just don't have enough talent to, to take advantage of some of their favorite scoring techniques with. So you don't want to just throw these matchups out there not knowing what you're doing. You want to do your homework, which is why you're watching these videos. You want to know who these teams are. You want to know you know, what type of depth options they have and and be able to adjust on the fly and take advantage of maybe a guy being on his heels because he's so used to using Vancouver, Detroit, Buffalo, that when you give him Ottawa or Anaheim, you know, it throws him off his game. So why not try and maximize that situation and know what you're doing with these teams? Because they can certainly do some do some work if left unattended in some of these matchups. Like Ottawa has very good shooters for their tier. So if you put them up against Anaheim, who has very poor goalies, or Tampa Bay, who has a very poor defense um, in terms of their defensemen, their forwards are pretty good on defense, but their defense defensemen themselves are pretty poor. Um, you know, Ottawa can be dangerous in those situations. They can be good if they keep the puck out of their own zone, away from their goalie, which is their weakness. They're, they're a perfectly good team. In fact, 
this is one of the few teams I will actually recommend from the expansion tier to go into another tier and um, try and steal some victories with. I might suggest San Jose and Tampa Bay, but I don't think they're quite as well equipped in terms of team balance as, as Ottawa. So that's something to definitely keep in mind with Ottawa is just that they have great balance. So take advantage of it. So, yeah, you definitely want to know what you're doing with this team. Because if you don't, then to, the, to, to you, they're just all a bunch of nobodies that, you know, they don't, they don't do anything all that impressive, but, you know, they do have good skills. They're just, you got to know where they are so you don't waste your time in the game looking for them. And, you know, Doug smells good from there, so some plays just reg work regardless. Like those one-time plays right by the post, they're going to work more often than not regardless of who you're using. So that's another thing to keep in mind with a team like Ottawa. Just know some plays that, you know, whatever, like it's, if it's crease crutting or those simple little one-time plays that are right by the post or, or deeks, just know those plays, have them as your bread and butter so that even when you're using guys like this, you can still rely on them. And they can still... Um, score you goals and you take advantage take advantage of stuff that is presented to you because the last thing you want to do is use a team have chances presented to you and be completely unable to take advantage of them because you know you just don't know how to score with them or you're used to having these superstar players and that's what you rely on just overwhelming your player your opponent with skill this is a perfect situation to not rely on your skill and just know your team um, take advantage of what they do have and use it to your best ability and Ottawa is I think one of the better expansion teams in which to do that with um, if you want to really muddy things up and just turn it into an absolute mess I mean I think Florida Anaheim matchup is probably your best bet but if you want to leave at least a little bit of skill on the ice so that you can score against your opponent especially if he's a higher end opponent he's probably going to be fairly competent with his manual goalie um, you're you're going to need some ability to score with your players. And, you know, uh, Florida and Anaheim really test those, those test those limits in terms of being able to score. So maybe just kick it up, kick, kick the skill level up just a, a notch to teams like San Jose and Ottawa to where you're not just throwing away chances unless they're absolutely premium. So... Um, one reason I think Hartford is a stretch matchup, kind of just kind of diving into this matchup real quick, is Hartford is a little bit heavy, especially on defense. So I think Ottawa's forwards are actually pretty well suited in this matchup. They can withstand some of that pressure by guys like uh, Burt and um, Weinrich and even Zalapski to a far lesser extent. But, um, you know, Zalapski can only be in so many one, one spot at any one time. So you bring your balanced scoring attack up against Hartford, it could be difficult for them to focus in on one or two guys like, say, your Tampa Bay, and clearly Bradley's your best score. It's a little bit easier to focus in on a guy, whereas Ottawa, you're balanced. So I feel like uh, Hartford has a little bit trouble, a little bit more trouble dealing with that than they would Tampa Bay. Also, um, I think Hartford's offense isn't necessarily overwhelming, especially if you can keep them away from your net. They're not especially dynamic speed wise so your team can pretty much skate with Hartford just fine they're not going to blow you away so if you can keep things in front of you keep the slot closed down um, and just be on top of things with your manual goalie this is a very feasible matchup although I don't know if I'd recommend it but if you want to get into your opponent's head or say you you've done all your homework with Ottawa and you know that your opponent you know he he just loves high skilled players and all you can do is deke, or all you can do is, you know, one time. And you can just kind of corner him off into things that you know you can defend. So, you know, if you know Otto really well, you're comfortable with them. This is a situation where you can kind of bait your opponent into taking a better team. But then you slow them down as well. Because you say you may not like some of the other expansion teams. You may not like San Jose. You may not like... Florida or Anaheim or Tampa Bay. You only like Ottawa. Well, this is a team I think Ottawa can go against. I, I don't really recommend it unless you really know what you're doing, but um, 
you can certainly do a lot worse than this matchup. I mean, this is this is something I might consider against somebody um, to keep things challenge challenging for me in a tournament. Say they're a little bit uh, lesser in ability, and I just want to make the game more interesting to to try and replicate a more pressure pressurized situation for me later in the tournament. I might go in this in this direction and uh, take my chances, but. That's Ottawa in a nutshell. Um, that's kind of the expansion team um, strategy in a nutshell that I see a lot of people trying to utilize in tournament play. This does come around a lot, um, especially if you're a lower lower skilled player going against a higher skilled player. You want to know these teams so you can take advantage of any surprises you might have for your higher skilled opponent who may not be as educated um, because they're not all educated on these teams. Today. Some of them simply do not know who is who and what their attributes are. So. With that said, that is the Adams division in its entirety. Next, I'm going to be moving on to the Patrick division, starting with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I hope you join me for that. And in the meantime, if you like this video, go ahead and feel free to provide a thumbs up or provide a comment. Um, if you want to see more content like this, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel outright. And more stuff like this will be coming for sure, especially as we build up towards the King of 94-3 tournament in Vancouver on October 28th. So until I bring the Pittsburgh episode, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.